Harry. Ladies and gentlemen, this evening we would like to pay tribute to a hero. An American hero, yes, but his goodness cannot be defined by a border. Él fue para la gente. Yes, he was for the people. His name was Cesar Estrada Chavez. We chose this speaker because of his principles and beliefs. His tireless work speaking and organizing on behalf of the migrant farm workers brought about many changes in working and living conditions. In a statement on March 31st, 2009, by President Obama, commemorating what would have been his 82nd birthday, said that through his courage, Cesar Chavez taught us that a single voice could change our country and that together we could make America a stronger, more just, and more prosperous nation. <clears throat> Cesar Chavez was an educator, an environmentalist, a humanitarian, and above all, a voice for all those that could not be heard. Tonight, we will commemorate his life and times. We will talk about his early years, his years as a founder and organizer of the National Farm Workers Association and the United Farm Workers of America, and about an important speech that he prepared during a 25-day spiritual fast and delivered to a meeting on Mexican-Americans and, and the church at the second annual Mexican conference in Sacramento, California in March of 1968. Thank you, David. The first part of our speech is about his early years. At this point, we will like to show you a visual presentation of the man. I'm not very different from anyone else who has ever tried to accomplish something with his life. From watching what my mother and father went through when I was growing up, from what we experienced as migrant workers in California, that dream, that vision grew from my own experience with racism, with hope, with a desire to be treated fairly and to see my people treated as human beings and not as chattel. Later in the 50s, I experienced a different kind of exploitation. In San Jose, in Los Angeles, and in other urban communities, we, the Mexican-American people, were dominated by a majority that was Anglo. I began to realize what other minority people had discovered that the only answer, the only hope, was in organizing. We experienced some successes in voter registration, in politics, in battling racial discrimination. Successes in an era when political awareness among Hispanics was almost non-existent. How could we progress as a people, even if we lived in the cities, while the farm workers, men and women of our color, we're condemned to a life without pride. How could we progress as a people while the farm workers who symbolize our history in this land were denied self-respect? How could our people believe that their children could become lawyers and doctors and judges and business people while this shame, this injustice was permitted to continue? At the age of 10, his family became a migrant farm worker after losing their farm in the Great Depression. This experience changed his life forever. After serving our country in the U.S. Navy, he returned to help ease, to help ease, ease the hardship and endure it. By the, uh, by the ag agricultural workers in California. In his next phase of life, he started a plan to organize all farm workers to stand united to fair wa wages and working conditions. The, the World News Digest Encyclopedia states that 
states that from 1952 to 1962, he worked for the community service organization, a self-help group online under United Farm Workers of, Workers of America, the UFW, followed by his 1964 grassroots campaign, La Causa, Social Justice, from 2006 by Michael G. Prouty. These are too, too many reasons why the Encyclopedia Britannica painted, paint, painting as an inspir inspiration on Spanish leaders and organizers of the first of the first successful union of agricult agricultural workers. And Senator Robert F. Kennedy was no was noted as calling me, Mr. Chavez the one of the hero heroic figures of all time. A kid at WW Cesar Chavez dark art. These are testaments to the man regarding his core values and beliefs. This ethos. Terry? Now we get to the purpose of his speech. He gave this speech in a time in our country's history when working conditions for the farm workers were deplorable. The growers had the upper hand, and things we take for granted today, things like a, mi uh, a reasonable minimal, minimum wage and health benefits, were not a reality for the farm workers. Through his organization of people, he was, he was able to bring about widespread change. But the speech was directed at the church more than anything else. He felt strongly that the people were not getting religious access and guidance from the church. At one point he mentioned that due to the workers' strike against the growers, they were told that they could not even use the church's auditorium for meetings. He goes on to mention that the farm, work, farm workers' money helped build this uh, auditorium. The, the message needed to be sent, and the church needed to also to sacrifice for social change. Next, we will talk about the communication concepts that he used in this historical speech. One. Yes. Thank you, Terry. He used many speaking styles in his speech from 1968. At this time, we would like to share, to share them with you. The first style used, used happened to appear at the, at the end of the speech. This was the use of colloquial expressions 